Welcome to Salento with Love. I'm David Mengoli. But you got me in a little bit of a moment. Oh, I better get out of the hole. Oops. Yes. Uh, a toilet. Well, what are we going to talk about in this video? Interesting. You may go and view a property, probably an old historic property, and it's absolutely fantastic. And you see a toilet and you think that's it we're sorted actually you know what we can dig this way that way and we can connect another toilet to the property ask yourself where is that toilet connected to interesting well you see the network of the sewer system in a lot of the towns wasn't developed until the 1930s 40s and even further so the chances are i would say majority of the cases that that toilet is not connected to the main network of the sewer system but is connected to a cesspool that is literally underneath the house now can you continue to use that that's an interesting question we'll probably answer that through the course of the video but the way these cesspools were built back in the days they would just act into the rock so you can imagine the fluids or anything that was pouring into these cesspools were seeping through into the water system as well of the city no wonder why there were a lot of infections and a lot of other issues back in the days because then people were drinking the water like if you look at this property just there there was a well and just over there, there was a cesspool. So you can imagine this waters, dirty waters, seeping through the rock and getting into the water that then people were drinking. Well, today it doesn't happen anymore. People connect themselves to the network system. So what do you need to look out when you're looking for a property in an old town center? How do you know if the property is connected to the system? Well, a couple of ways. Obviously, the first way is to ask your realtor if the property is connected. Now, don't just take their word. You know, majority of the time they'll say, yes, it is connected. And you think, oh, okay, fantastic, it's connected. But sometimes, and they'll show you a water meter. But sometimes the two systems are not connected in the sense that the property may be connected to the water system of the house or the water system of the city. But it's not connected to the sewer system and so you ask for a water bill or you ask for a utility bill and even there it's difficult to tell so the only way really of finding out is to make sure that you have a manhole outside your property that looks like that and it's got written on it fognatura now this doesn't matter where you are in italy you need to have that manhole outside Fognatura. Now, what are the costs involved if you pick up a property and it doesn't have a connection? What is the time length to get a connection of either water or sewer to your property? Let's go back to the office and talk to Milena, who is actually in charge in my company to make sure that these things do happen and happen smoothly. And here we are in our office together with Milena. Ciao Milena. Ciao. <laughs> so what do you do here Milena? Cosa fai qui? Io sono admin. Ah. So she's admin. So for any uh, of our clients that uh, we offer already our property management, they've probably been in touch and been talking to Milena. Quindi i nostri clienti già ti conoscono. Sì. But we are talking about connecting a house to the sewer system and the water grid within the town and Milena is the person in charge to look after our clients when the situation like the one that we are describing in this video arises so Milena è complesso allacciare una casa al sistema fognario e di acqua del, del comune? Non è difficile ma è molto molto complesso. Mm, okay so it's not difficult but is extremely complex and like I was mentioning at the beginning of this video having somebody helping you through the process can be really helpful this doesn't apply just here in Puglia Questo, questa complessità non è solamente qui in Puglia ma immagino in tutta Italia sì, no? esatto. soprattutto se siamo in un centro storico 
è e quello è il problema principale. Yes. So this issue can be a little bit more complicated if we are actually handling an historic center or a property within the historic center. And because I know that a lot of you that watch my videos love properties all over Italy in this beautiful old town, old hamlet, you're probably going to find these information extremely useful. Quindi, Milena, ci puoi portare Prima di tutto, la prima domanda, dall'inizio alla fine, quindi oggi acquisto un immobile e sono diventato il proprietario di questo immobile storico, ma non c'è né la fogna né l'acqua, o forse c'è l'acqua ma manca la fogna. Quant'è il periodo di tempo da quando inizio il processo a quando potenzialmente ho l'allaccio? Il tempo stimato è di un anno e mezzo. Un anno e mezzo? Eh sì. Wow! So, today you become the proud owner of a property and you think, wow, there is not sewer connected to the house or there is water but there is not a sewer or both of them are missing and I start the process. Question is how long does it take? Estimated time? A year and a half. This doesn't just apply here but in many places across the country. So, un periodo abbastanza lungo. Sì. Quali sono i vari passaggi? Il primo, primo step. Passe, sì, il primo step fondamentale è la comunicazione da fare alla società. Questa comunicazione, e qui la parte molto importante, non può essere fatta via email, ma solo tramite PEC, che è una posta elettronica certificata. Solo in, in questo modo viene presa in carico la nostra richiesta di okay. allaccio. So the first step is to make a formal communication to the water company that you want to, you become the owner and you need that connection to happen. And you can't just send an email or pick up the phone and tell them, oh look, you know, I need water and sewer connected. No, you need to do it using a certified electronic email system, which in Italy is called PEC. So in this particular case, she takes care of that. In your particular case, you need somebody to help you with that process. Prossimo step. Il prossimo step è che all'incirca dopo 10 giorni eh, si viene contattati dalla società che dovrà eseguire i lavori per un primo appuntamento. Il primo appuntamento è un sopralluogo. So, hmm. so the first step is to uh, wait for a phone call that you're going to get uh, within probably about 10 days uh, saying that a surveyor is going to come and inspect the site to see exactly what are the further steps. Il prossimo. prossimo, sì, se come abbiamo già accennato l'immobile si trova in un centro storico, il tecnico che viene a fare il sopralluogo può richiedere la nomina dell'archeologo e questa nomina spetta al proprietario dell'immobile. Wow, so, when this uh, survey comes along, if we are talking about an historic center, in majority of the cases they will ask you to appoint an archeologist. Yes, you know, in Italy there's so many old ruins that when they start digging they could find everything. So, these companies to literally feel free about doing the work, they need to appoint an archaeologist to be there on site. So, l'archeologo che bisogna nominare, so you need to appoint an archaeologist. So you need to find an archaeologist within that area that would actually take the job on. L'archeologo è lo dobbiamo cercare noi, dobbiamo fare una ricerca e vedere chi può dare al meglio il suo servizio. Successivamente cosa succede? Che il tecnico che è venuto a fare il sopralluogo rilascia a noi una relazione con la richiesta della nomina di un archeologo. Successivamente noi nominiamo questo archeologo e dobbiamo vedere se accetta l'incarico Tutto questo viene inviato al comune di appartenenza dell'immobile. Ok, so you have appointed an archaeologist, the surveyor that came along has actually given a report. These two elements put together, the report from the surveyor that works for the company together with the name of the archaeologist that he's taken the job on, gets submitted to the local authority. Successivamente il comune prende visione sempre tramite PEC, noi parliamo, la comunicazione deve essere sempre so, ufficiale. Very important element, all of this back and forwards of communication, it's always done using the electronic certificate system, which is PEC, posta elettronica certificata. Esatto, il comune prende visione di questa nostra richiesta, nomina un geometra, il quale andrà a fare il sopralluogo, e successivamente questa sempre il comune ci dà l'ok okay tramite PEC. 
So another step. So the local authority, the comune, will appoint a geometer or a, a technician, really, an engineer, to go and have a look at the site before giving you the go ahead or the clearance on proceeding with the work. Ma, c'è da dire una cosa molto importante. We're in Italy, you know, Rome wasn't built in one night. Il comune ci dà l'autorizzazione per iniziare i lavori. Dice sì, ok, va bene, ma tutta questa documentazione viene inviata alla sovrintendenza la quale nominerà un secondo archeologo e un secondo geometra wow. che valuteranno tutta la situazione e bisogna aspettare per avere so, un altro ok. So the local authority says yes, but because we are in an old historic center, the comune, the local authority, they still need to wait for the approval for, from the sovrintendenza, which is the Uh, the governing body really for all the historic elements or parts of Italy, which is really the whole of Italy. So la sovrintendenza controlla tutto, sì. un, paese, un paese storico. We have more than 50% of the monuments around the world. So, so the, the, the sovrintendenza will then appoint an additional archaeologist and an additional engineer to overlook at the whole paperwork before they give the clearance. So when they do give the clearance they will communicate back to the local authority that they're okay to go ahead quindi una volta che la sovrintendenza dà l'ok okay, lo dà direttamente al comune sì esatto in quel momento il geometra contatta la società che dovrà fare il servizio per dire ok potete iniziare i lavori ok so at that stage the geometra that works for the local authority which is at the communication back from the sovrintendenza could actually, can actually contact the company that is going to do the work and say, great, you can schedule a time to start the work. E noi nel frattempo cosa facciamo? Ah, la cosa più bella! ta -da! Telefono! So, so what do we do, what do you do in the meantime? Well, if you were doing this process yourself in the meantime, a lot of patience and a lot of phone calls because this bit in the middle It's a bit of a sticky situation, so the only way to deal with it is by calling this sovrintendenza or the comune, one and the other, until somebody comes up with a decision and a date. È una bellissima partita ping pong. <laughs> so it's a table tennis game and you've got to have somebody like Milena. You wonder why Milena works for me. But you've got to have somebody like Milena that, uh, you know, a, bit, a little bit like a Rottweiler, a good Rottweiler, no? Se come un Rottweiler, no? Esatto. <laughs> For a good one. You need somebody that really looks after you in getting this process across uh, done. So, cosa succede dopo? Successivamente... Finalmente il tecnico ci chiama per dire siamo pronti per il lavoro, ma loro non possono iniziare il lavoro se non viene anche l'archeologo. Ok, so at that stage the call you say we are ready to start the work, but the archaeologists need to be on site, otherwise we can't start the work. Però c'è un sopralluogo prima. Sì, esatto, c'è il sopralluogo, loro vengono, vedono tutto quel, dove vanno messi i vari impianti, prima di iniziare questo lavoro si chiama l'archeologo e nel momento in cui il primo scavo mm -hmm. ci deve essere l'archeologo altrimenti non possono fare nulla ok so before they start the work they need to send another surveyor along to make sure that things are going in the right place I did meet personally with the surveyor who came along and actually marked with the letter F fognatura and with the letter A Aqua, where it's going to be connected. And that was Lorenzo working for the company that is going to be doing the digging. So the first step after what we're going to be talking about later about the application and everything is to meet with an engineer where he's going to establish exactly where things are going to go. So as you have noticed, it's actually marked here the letter a. That stands for, in this particular case, Aquedotto. So the first company that comes in is responsible for digging the road and creating the space where the pipe work is going to be running. And in this particular case, they're going to be running the water, connecting it to the main network that goes through the city at the back there, and then come up here and put the casing there. And they're going to do the same thing. You see the letter F? Letter F. Fognatura, which is the sewer system. 
So the same system, he needs to know the depth of the well that is going to be going there. But that depth is also dictated by the depth of the main system that runs in the road. So in this particular case, about 85 centimeters, the main system. So this one here can't go any lower than about 60 centimeters. That's to create the angle for the water to flow and go into the main system. Your plumber will then have to run in your private property the pipe work in this particular case is a is a long little alley so your plumber then will need to run sometimes he's right in front of your door if you're on the road and connect to the main sewer system so they've marked where they're going to put the boxes Cosa succede adesso? Iniziano gli scavi, finalmente. wow they're going to start digging posso dire una cosa Okay, questi scavi sono iniziati dopo sette mesi. Oh, okay. Well, in this particular case, well, this is not the case everywhere in Italy because this is almost like a Q&A, but this particular project took seven months to, to get them to dig. Now, it was some digging. Let's have a look at the digging. to the day where the digging is happening now when you see the uh, extensive work that needs to be done in order to connect a property to a sewer system and a water system you understand also why the process can be a little lengthy so I'm gonna turn the camera around and in this video that we've talked about how important it is to make sure when you're picking up a property that potentially it is connected to the grid and if it's not make some inquiries in regards of the costing and the time that it would take and potentially have somebody on the ground in Italy, whatever that is, that can help you and assist you through that process. So let's see what they're up to. Scavi. There were like some real digging going on, eh? That's it's like you're thinking, oh yeah, they're just gonna go and dig a little bit. No, there's some real digging. Wonder why it takes ecco perché ci vuole un bel sì. po' di tempo e tutti questi elementi prima di poter scavare nel centro storico. Before you get to dig in the old historic center, no you can understand why it can take a little bit of time. Adesso cosa succede? Che adesso il proprietario dell'immobile deve allacciare i vari tubi alla rete. <laughs> ok, so now what's left now it's for the owner of the building, in this particular case you, that you own the building to run your waste pipe and your water pipe to the two areas where the box has been put in and that's it. E poi? Pagare le bollette. Eh? Pay your bills. Grazie Milena, thank you very much. Well, let's go and see if they've finished what they started a couple of days ago. Grazie Milena. Grazie a te. Ciao. 
So we're just arriving on site and well you can probably tell there is no more digging going on and wow magically look we've got the water we've got the fognatura that has been put there they've closed everything up and we've got ta-da magically a water meter so this house is now officially connected to the city grid for the dirty waters and from the aquedotto, which is the water. Incredible. So what have we learned through this video? Well, the process can be a little bit complex. It could be lengthy, but it can be done. So having somebody on your side that can help you through the process it's really helpful but just even before that when you are considering purchasing a property just ask your realtor anywhere in Italy if the property is connected to the grid already for the water the waste as well the fognatura remember and probably even the electricity and just ask how long would it take and if they are prepared to potentially take care of that prior to you purchasing their property or if they know somebody who can take care of it after the property has been purchased. So hopefully this video has been extremely helpful for anybody who's purchasing a property that is not connected to the main city grid. And mm, I hope you've enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel. I wish I could do more. And stay safe wherever you are.